All right, guys. Uh, nice to have you back today. Um, so last class, we take a look at how you can store images and store audio, right? Now, today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to calculate how much memory or how much storage area does these images or audios take. So we're going to learn about how to calculate how big the file size to store them is. So Right, so first we're going to talk about how you can calculate image memory. So for example, this image over here of the Earth, today we're going to learn how to calculate, you know, how many uh, memory does this photo take for the computer to store? How many bits or maybe bits or gigabits? How many bits or just how many memory does images store? And you're going to learn about that. Before that, uh, though, we before we talk about how the formula, though, do a quick recap um, about about some key concepts. And the first is image resolution. So uh, image resolution is basically the number of pixels and number of pixels wide and number of pixels high of an image. Now, when you calculate image memory though, um, image resolution is just gives, given as a number. So given as the number of pixels in an image. For example, I have a image, you know, that is four, four pixels wide, or no, three pixels wide and three pixels high, for example, here. Then the image resolution, when they give you, like, calculate image memory, they would just say the image resolution is nine pixels, 9p or nine pixels, because uh, they would just give you, like, nine pixels. But the definition for image resolution is the number of pixels wide, number of pixels high. But in this specific circumstance, they just give you, you know, the amount of, total amount of pixels in an image. So that's image resolution. Next is color depth. And um, color depth is the number of bits used to represent the colors used in the image. So for example, if I have two colors, then I can use just one bit or one binary digit to represent two colors, right? So that is color depth and that is image resolution. Now, let's think how we can calculate the memory it takes to store an image. So you know, I have an image. Let's just have an example here. For example, I in this image it only has like one color, or well, two colors. It is a four by four, sixteen pixel image, right? And it has two colors. Say this is another color, and this is another color. How do we store this image into our our computer? So we switch it by representing each pixel with a binary number, right? So what is the memory taken to store the image? So of course, we know that each pixel is stored as a number. So of course, you would think that you want the total number of, of uh, you know, total number of pixels, which is the image resolution. So you take the image resolution, I'll just write IR here, image resolution, times by what? So we know that first we need to look at the number of pixels because for each pixel, we represent each pixel using like a number. The amount of bits, the amount of binary digits we use to represent each number is determined by what? Is determined by the color depth. The color depth is the number of bits we use to represent each pixel, right? The number of binary digits. So then times by the color depth or just CD. So we can say that the memory taken to store an image is the image resolution times the color depth because it is the number of pixels times the color depth, right? We want to represent each pixel with a um, with a binary number, and that binary the number of bits or the number of binary digits for each number is equal to the color depth, which is the number of colors used in the image. All right, so now let's take a look at a practice problem. Now, practice problems are really important for these types of calculation problems because, you know, this is the only way you can learn calculation. So let's take a look at a classic example here. Now, first in this question asked, how much memory does it take to store this image? Now, we talked about the uh, formula for how to calculate a, the, the memory taken to store an image. And that is the total number of pixels because each pixel is represented by a number times by the color depth of the image. So let's just write the photo, uh, the, the, the uh, formula, which is the memory is equal to the, um, the 
image resolution is number of pixels, image resolution times by the color depth. So uh, this is our formula, memory equals image resolution times color depth. The image resolution we said is equal to the number of pixels. And if the pixel is just like a small dot, each square is a pixel, you can count here four times five, there are 20 pixels in this image. So it is equal to 20 pixels times a color depth. Now before, we haven't talked about how we figure out what is the color depth of an image. Now, it is quite simple actually. First, what you want to do, uh, so we know that color depth is equal to the number of binary digits used to represent the amount of colors used in the photo, right? So first we need to figure out the amount of colors we used in the photo. Here we use one and two colors. So two colors in total are used in this photo. So now we want to figure out how many binary digits do we need to represent two colors. And it is quite simple, actually. What you want to do is you want to, uh, uh, so two colors, you want to say, uh, what you want to do, binary digit, so two, this is a formula, two as a base, to the power of something, so power of x, this should be greater or equal to the amount of colors we have. So here, two. Two to the power of x, x equals the amount of binary digits we have, is bigger than equal to the, uh, colors we have. So this is the amount of colors. This is the amount of colors we have in the photo. You should always write two because we are figuring out how many binary digits, the binary digits, right, BD, I will just write binary digits. So it's two in the bottom. X is the amount of digits we have answered. So I'll just write A for answer. So here, two to the power of X is bigger than or equal to two. And of course, x is equal to 1. Therefore, only one binary digit is taken to represent two colors. So remember, it will be equals to 20 times 1. And we know that one binary digit is equal to 1 bit, right? So this will be equal to 20 bits. So that would be answer to this question is 20 bits. All right. So a quick recap of how we solved this problem. First, um, we write the formula for how to calculate the memory, and that is memory equals image resolution times the color depth of the photo. The easy one to figure out is the image resolution, which just equals to the amount of pixels we have in a photo. So we just count them and write down 20. Next, we have to figure out the color depth, which is a bit more tricky. First, in figuring out color depth, is you want to figure out how many colors does this photo use. In this case, it only has two colors, so we will just write the two down. Then we use the formula two to the power of x is bigger than or equal to the amount of colors. We just we just uh, count it, and x is equal to the amount of binary digits we need to represent two colors. And two is a constant that we keep for every single thing. So then we just Figure out x easily, as you can see here, it is equal to 1. Therefore, we figure out the color depth of this photo is 1. And then we just times the 2 together to get 20 bits, right? So the unit is always bits if you think about binary digits. Binary digits equals bits, so the deep unit is always bits. And let's just take a look at this second question here. How about if we want to store 40 copies of this photo? Then how much memory do we need? Right, 40 copies of this photo. It's no brainer actually. Each copy needs 20 bits. Then 40 copies, we just 40 times 20 because each copy costs you know 20 bits. So with 40 times 20, we get 800 bits. So quite easy, right? But you need to know both. So if you have 40 copies, just times 40 by the amount of memory one photo takes, right? All right. So. Now let's take a look at how you can calculate audio memory. So um, how much memory it takes to store a piece of audio. Now, as before, let's uh, do a quick recap of um, some of the key vocabulary we learned before. First is sound sampling. And the sound sampling is the method in which we change 
analog audio into digital data. Uh, not that important for in this case, but just a quick recap. Very, very important. Next is sample rate. This is important. And sample rate is equal to the amount of audio samples we take every second. And the unit for this is per second. So the amount of audio samples or uh, audio samples we take in a second. Audio sample resolution is the amount of bits, very similar to color depth, is the amount of bits we use to represent the uh, amount of audio notes used. And the unit for it is bits. So these two are from last time. In total, there are three things that affect the amount of memory it takes to uh, store a piece of audio. Sample rate, sample resolution, and time of the audio. Time of the audio is simple, the amount of time it takes to play a piece of, the time length of the piece of audio, how long the audio is. The unit is second. Now I want to pause the video right now and try to figure out the uh, formula for how to calculate audio memory by yourself right now. I'll give you a hint and that is look at the units for these three factors and I'll just tell you that these three factors influence the, uh, the amount of memory the audio takes. All right, now let's take a look at the solution here. So as before, we have to first look at what contributes to audio memory, right? Um, so we have a piece of audio playing. We take the, right, we take, we record the notes of the music at certain points, right? So at each point, if we take a note here, we need to store this note as a number, right? As a binary number. We take, record the note, music note here, I have to record that as a binary number, record the note here, we have to uh, mem memorize or record that as a binary number. So at each point in which we take a note, we need to uh, record that as a binary number. And the total amount of notes that we take throughout the, um, the music is equal to sample rate times time of audio. If you think about it, that is actually true, right? Sample rate is the amount of samples, amount of recordings that we take in a second. And time of audio is the total amount of seconds that the audio is made out of, right? So if you times these two together, you will get the total amount of time that we need to record these music notes, or the total amount of music notes that we record for the audio that we need to memorize using binary numbers. So first, let's just write memory is equal to sample rate SR times time of audio, right? Length of audio, SR times T. Then, let's take a look at sample resolution. We know that each note, each music note, needs to be you know, represented as a binary number. What determines how many binary di digits, the amount of bits we need to be used to memorize, you know, or record each music note is the sample resolution. Sample resolution is equal to the amount of bits needed to represent the audio notes used, right? So we just, memory is equal to sample resolution times time of the audio times the sample, uh, oh shit, uh, sample rate and then sample resolution, sorry. All right, so sample resolution last, sample resolution. Okay, here. Kind of messed up for the two SRs, but you get the point. So the formula for how to calculate the memory taken for a piece of audio is just memory equals sample rate times time, which will get, give you the total amount of music notes recorded throughout the audio, times the sample resolution, which is the amount of binary digits we use to represent each uh, note. And the unit will ask for be in bits. So the audio memory will be in bits unless it's something different. Um, all right. Now let's take a look at a practice problem as before. Now this is calculations unit, so practice problems are really important. I suggest you guys to look at these uh, three, four times. Uh, get the hang of it. Have to understand it. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, over here. Now, 
you question one side to figure out how much memory does it take to store this piece of audio. Now, like before, you have to first write down the formula. So memory is equal to sample rate. Uh, sorry, I'm writing on my computer, so it's really difficult. But sample rate times by sample resolution times by time of audio. So T. All right. So uh, the easy one here. Last time it was easy to figure out the number of pixels used. There, the easy one to figure out is time. So you want to figure out each of these three variables, right? So you want to figure out time first. Uh, let's take a look at this table here. It is easy to see that the time is, of course, 10 seconds. So time equals to 10. Now, we've got to figure out the sample rate and the sample resolution. The sample rate is slightly easier to figure out because the definition is more straightforward. So sample rate is equal to the number of samples, the number of recordings you take in a second. So you just want to count, you know, this is one second, how many recordings did it take, right? So you will realize that from zero to one, one recording is taken. From one to two, one recording is taken. From two to three, one recording is taken. From three to four, one recording is taken. So every second, only one piece of recording is taken. So therefore, you can say that the sample rate is equal to one sample per second. Time 10 times by one. Now you want to figure out the sample resolution. It's very similar to how you figure out uh, the color depth. So color depth is you just write two to the power of x bigger than or equal to the number of colors you use, right? Sample resolution, let's remind ourselves of the definition. It's the number of binary digits we use to represent the amount of uh, music notes we used. So first you want to figure out how many music notes did you use to record this sample. Now for these tables, it makes it really easy for you. Just take a look at the top number. It's 10, right? So, you know, table has 10. Just some people would just say, hey, the top note is nine here. We didn't use like some notes in the middle. So I would just, you know, figure out how many music, individual music notes you have. But uh, it is a bit different than the, how you figure out color depths here. Just look at the top value for the music notes. So just take a look, so there is 10, so, in, uh, in total, 10 music notes are used, right? So uh, so you don't need to count the individual music notes. It has to just use 10 for the amount of music notes you have. Now you want to figure out the number of binary digits we need to uh, represent 10 music notes. Now it is the same as last time. First, you want to write down 10, and then you want to 2 to the power of x, and x is the amount of binary digits we need is bigger than or equal to 10. We know that two to the power of three is equal to eight. Now eight is not enough, right? Eight is not enough, it's smaller than 10. We wanna be bigger than or equal to 10, uh, so we can use two to the power of four is equal to 16. So 16 is bigger than or equal to 10. So we can say that the color resolution, um, the, oh no, the, uh, sound resolution for this um the sample resolution for this piece of audio is equal to four the top here this is the amount of binary digits you need to represent a bigger than 10 music notes so times by four which is the sample resolution you will get a total of 40 bits needed to represent this piece of audio all right um Take a look at one last thing I want to remind you of. I got destroyed by this concept when I was taking my exams because I had no idea there was this thing, but it's a weird one called the stereo effect. Now, you know, some questions, you know, for example, here, they will ask you how much memory does it take to store this piece of audio? And they will write at the end here, they will say that this audio has, is, has the, this piece of audio has this stereo effect. If they write the word stereo effect in the in the question, don't just ignore it, right? Don't just ignore it. This is very, very weird. If it says that it's on stereo effect, now I'll explain to you what that means. So 
stereo effect essentially what this means is for example some things like earphones have like two earbuds right so for earbuds and earphones you need to store actually two pieces of music because you need to store a piece of music in each of the earbuds transfer each music to each of the earbuds so actually the memory taken to store the audio get times by two memory needed to times by two once you understand the concept it's actually really easy for example it says the audio is on stereo effect. Let's just suppose that at the end here they added it's on stereo effect. Then before we calculate that the memory taken is like 40 bits, all you do is just times by two. Simple as that. You times by two, you get the memory's 80 bits. That's it's as simple as that. So yeah. Stereo effect, when you see the word stereo effect times the memory you got initially by two, and you'll be fine. All right, that's it for this class. Quite a lot of um, calculations. Uh, make sure to review a lot. Very important session as well. All right, uh, see you next time, I guess. Yeah.